G'day folks, welcome back to Learn to Paint TV. This week's episode, we've got an exciting little episode uh, this week. We're going to do a little uh, house that I saw when I was in Giverny in France. Now, Giverny is the hometown of Monet. Walking out of Giverny, there's this walking track. It took about an hour to walk down to the main town. And uh, I came across this little cottage nestled in the uh, trees there. Took a quick photo, and I thought it might make a really interesting um, painting for us to do today. So when we're doing our drawing, we want to just have this paint nice and loose rather than being thick out of the tube. The paints that I'm using are the Atelier Interactive. If you want to get a list of all the different paints and things that I use, then go to our learntopaint.tv website. And uh, I've got a list there of all the different paints and things that I use under the art supplies section. So I've just made up a sort of a, a mauve purple loose mix there. And then looking at our drawing, we've got a horizon line that is about a third of the way up. It runs through around about there. And from that horizon line, we have a path that sort of runs. Now I'm gonna alter the shape of the path um, just to make it a bit more pleasing for purposes of doing a painting. So that sits there and then the cottage itself, there's, you know, it's an old world cottage. I'm not sure how many years old it would be, probably, if, you know, 300 years, maybe more, but it sits around about here. Now it's quite intricate in detail and we may not get all of it in, uh, but we'll certainly give it our best. <laughs> um, so I'll put a photo of it up on the screen, obviously, to, so that you can see, but it runs through there. Behind that, we've got trees and this is part of the composition that I really liked so we've got clumps of trees and that runs up to around about there so it's such a nice sort of frame for this cottage there's a chimney that runs into there there's a little little attic window in there which runs back to there now this roof, it, there's some quite intricate little details in here. I'm not going to try and get them all in with our drawing, but we'll just indicate where the main shapes are. And then around about, oh dear, there's another one that runs in. We might skip that one, I think. We'll just run that down as a wall there. And overlapping that, we've got, it's almost like an entry gatehouse that sits in about there. And that has a column there. And then there's a column there. And then it's got like a gate, large gates to enter in. And then there are some windows and things in here which you can't really see that well there's maybe a doorway there so this is obviously our main focal point is this uh, building so that's why we want to just take our time and get the drawing in right for that uh, this is where we'll put all of our focus right here and the path's going to lead our eye up to that However, half the building from this point here is covered by bushes and so on. So there's different layers of trees and things in there. We'll, we'll get to those. Um, and then there's, so as this comes down the path here, warming up that colour that we're drawing with just slightly. So yeah, th these ones are going to come and sit down here and then we've got this grass in through here and we've got a, a bit of lawn through there. So I'm just thinking my way through what we need to do here to make this painting work. So we've got a lot of darks in this area in here 
and we get a lot of lights up in the back there where the light is catching. Very good, I'm, I'm quite happy with that as a drawing. Um, so clearly as I was describing when I was doing the drawing, this is what we want to make really sharp the building. And it gets some nice darks in here because it's gonna be sunlight on this face here and in here. And I want this to be grayed off a little bit so I'll take a pinhead of the yellow. Whenever you add that third primary, it grays it off for you. So that's quite a, a nice tone. I'll just lighten it ever so slightly. Now I probably will darken it in parts in here as well, but let me just add a little bit of water. So, you know, I've light, I've gone for the lighter version. It's probably still a little bit dark. Just light enough. Just for in the back here. Okay. So there's very distant trees here. And I'm just scrubbing that brush around, you know, I'm not using any particular technique. I'm trying to get random edges, so I find that with these bristle brushes, if you just scrub it around, okay, it's starting to look good. So just by painting in that row of trees, the shadow side of that row of trees in the back, we've automatically sort of painted the negative shape of our of our building here. Now it's looking good already. That brings us to this next layer through here. So what do we do? We just strengthen it up slightly, a little bit less of the white into this now. Okay, so you can see that's what I was using before and this is what I'm using now. So we've got, definitely got a nice graduation. I'll just cool it off slightly and Pinhead of the yellow in there, and I think I just need a touch more white in there. Let's just try that. If I put that up there against what I was doing as a comparison, you can see that it creates a layer then that comes forward. Oop, bit of red there. Okay, so that's automatically going to create aerial perspective for us and some depth. But we're here to create a good looking painting. That's our primary purpose which means we have to change things up sometimes. You can see that? It's nice dark. I want to get this foreground one here even darker and get in that dark shadow. By having that nice thick dark shadow there, again, all this will pop out quite nicely. That's the theory. <laughs> That's what I love about painting is we're basically taking a three-dimensional world and representing it on a two-dimensional plane. So if you understand some of the, I won't say tricks, but the techniques to do that, then it becomes quite exciting. Okay, so you can see I've got that darker down in here, down in this section here. So I'm quite happy the way this one's progressing along. You can already see that there's a nice little lead in to the main center of interest there. So I think we're traveling along pretty well. What I'll do now is we'll just add in some earthy tone. Just with the crimson and the yellow ochre. Okay, just run that in here. Wherever I'm going to put green grass basically is where I'm putting this down because I find this is a really nice underpainting tone for green grass. It just makes the grass glow a little bit. Mainly because red is the complement of green. If you know your colour wheel, and again if you, if you don't know your colours that well or how to mix them, definitely recommend our um, colour mixing course too. Which I created because I had you know so many students who were unclear about how to mix up different colours. And also things like aerial perspective where we've got different layers and um, values and so on. So 
that's a good course to really get clear on all of that. Okay. So we'll just go a little bit different tone just to separate it. So I'll have a bit of white to that. We'll, we'll adjust it later on. So the path goes to there, comes out here. All right, well, I think that brings us to the end of step two, our blocking. As I said, I'm, I'm gonna treat this as all one section here, which we'll paint that in, um, in step three. But as far as step two goes, our blocking, uh, I think we're looking good. We've got this nice rich sky. We've got several layers of depth. And as you can see, you know, it's cooler, grayer, and lighter in value at the back. And as we come forward, I've warmed it up. I've darkened the value. So that creates layers of depth in a painting. So it's a good tip to remember with um, landscape painting. In, I'm going to let this all dry off, obviously. It's already getting dry, but I'm going to leave it for at least half an hour to an hour. Let it dry off, and then we'll come back and we'll, um, we'll really get stuck into it from there. But we'll start off with mixing up a light green. So our ultramarine blue and yellow ochre into that some titanium white. I've got a bit of water on the brush, which is just running down there. And a little bit of gray, uh, sorry, a little bit of alizarin crimson just to gray it back. That's too much. Okay, so because it's too much, I'll add a bit more blue, a bit more yellow. Okay. Now, let's just test. It's always difficult to know whether we've got the right color mix up there against the white palette it's gonna look different up here in contrast with everything else. So get it as close as you can, but then come in here and let's just test. Now I think that's probably pretty good. I'm gonna lighten it just slightly. Okay, and then I'm gonna push that edge of the brush through. Now if it clumps together, you can get some paper towel and just pull it. That's why I've got this big backboard here. I can just scrape a little bit of it out and let's just roll some of this in here. And it's getting some nice random sort of foliage shapes happening in there. So we're going to do several passes with this just to build up the layers here. And to that I'll add our cadmium yellow light. I'll just add a little touch of that in there. So we'll go there, ultramarine blue again, bit of the cadmium, sorry, the yellow ochre. Okay, just that on its own is going to be darker. Like so. but then I can come in and just clip in some highlight just to show you. Just in on top there like that. So that's what we're working towards is just building up these layers of foliage here. Start off with this roof. It's a brown basically. So we'll get some blue. So with a brown, I'm going to mix an orange. So yellow ochre, alizarin crimson will give me an orange. Okay, like so. Then I'm going to add blue into it. And that'll take it to a darker version. That's too dark. Okay, so now I'll lighten it with white. I'll put a little bit of the yellow in there. Okay, and that's pretty close. It's a chocolatey, light chocolatey brown. 
it's just run that in The actual tone is probably a bit more of a slaty gray color, but I think this warmer brown, I think is going to work better. It's just got a bit more life to it, I think. So I'm gonna go with that, I like it. Okay, where I've got that bit of foliage, I'll just smudge that in there. Smudge a bit up in there. Okay, and I'll come back over that, no problem. Okay, that roof's gonna come to around about there. face there is white to about there and then that runs that way okay, that runs that way okay and that face there is Tone. Then that face in the front there is getting more light. So let's take some white and then we'll just lighten and I'll just add a little bit of the yellow into it to warm it up a little bit. So a warmer version of it. It's probably a little bit too on the yellow there. Just tone it back a little. That's better. Okay, so this little roof here is uh, quite a bit redder. So we'll go mix that red in there. Run that there. Into there. It's looking good. This white, I'm going to add just the tiniest little bit of that cadmium yellow light. Well, that's quite strong. It overpowers the white too much. Well, I just want to warm the white up, is what I'm doing to get a bit of a sunlight kind of look. And let's now just run that down that edge. Now let's get into our blue, our yellow ochre. A bit of red in there. Okay, so we're gonna, gonna start off just getting mid-tones in first. As we were doing before, let's just continue to work in around here. I need that brush to be leaking though. So now that we've got some of that building established, we can start to work up to the building and over it in parts. And it just sits the building back into that landscape there quite nicely. Okay, now I think we'll do similar sort of tone, just go a little bit brighter. 
up in here on the side that's catching the light. Now I might need to strengthen the darks in this tree here, I think. Oh, look how much brighter that is. Stand back and have a look. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting somewhere here. Let me just pop that to get cleaned. Clean out this brush here. And I think what we need here now is a nice light grass color. And run this along out the back. Grabbing a little bit into that shadow area. Okay, I'll just vary the tone of that grass just ever slightly. Starting to come together nicely, nicely, nicely. And again, I've stressed this in our other videos, but that little bit of red poking through the grass there, just beautiful. So for the path, I'm just gonna use this titanium white here, a bit of a lizard crimson, a little bit of yellow ochre. to pink, a little bit more yellow ochre in there. Something like that, let's test. I'm trying to make this look like a rustic country path. It runs further out the back, but also leads up into the cottage there. In reality, it's a bitumen path, but who on earth wants to paint bitumen, right? Far more interesting to make it a country laneway sort of thing. Very good. Well, I think we're pretty well finished. 
This is a little cottage on the road out of Giveney, one of Monet's neighbours once upon a time, I'm sure. Great little painting, and um, I really like the way this sort of centre of interest is sort of tucked away around this country road. Nice big darks, and it makes the sunlight hitting the front of it really pop and come alive. It's a, it's a good little painting, just take your time with it, work your way through it, uh, but it's certainly one that you'll enjoy, and the uh, finished results are great looking painting as well. So have fun with it, and I'll see you next time on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.